Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is a very, very, very late reading wrap up for June. Now I actually read a total of 36 books in June because I had a chest infection, I was off work for two weeks sick and spent the entire time in bed either reading or sleeping. Let's get started, it's gonna take a while. Okay, the first book I read was The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, I gave it two stars, it was alright, I liked the story, I liked Hester's story, but there's a lot of bump in it. It could have been told in a hundred pages or, or less, her story. It, it didn't need to go on the way it did. We got the picture that she was ostracised, we got the picture that it was all her fault because she's a woman and the women are always to blame regardless, especially in Puritan New England. But it could have been like a couple, a hundred pages shorter and you still would have found out the story because she was more interesting than any other part of the story. Then I read What Happened to Marilyn by Alexander Rigby. I gave this four stars. This tells the story of literally what happened to Marilyn. Um, our main character is Jeremiah. He invites a time machine, goes back to 1962 and ki basically kidnaps Marilyn and takes her a hundred years into the future and helps her make her life for herself and this tells the story of what happens when people recognize her and how she resolves everything at the end because she's a very clever and resourceful woman so yes i gave that four stars like i said this is going to be very very quick i read the switch by beth o'leary so this is about a girl and her grandmother who switched lives um Lena takes two months off of work and goes to live in her grandmother's house and her grandmother goes down to live in London um, and she's about to turn 80 and basically it's about how they can find what they need near a home rather than away. So, yeah it was a really really nice story and again I gave it four stars. I read The San Sanitarium by uh, Sarah Pierce. This has been all over TikTok. Um, I enjoyed this one and gave it five stars. Now, I know some people don't enjoy this one um, but basically it tells the story of um, this uh, cop who goes to visit this what was a sanatorium but now is a five-star hotel. People start disappearing and turning up dead and basically she investigates it. It's very 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 interesting. A bit, a bit creepy too but yeah enjoyed that one. Whew. Then I read Nice Work, if you can get it. This is by Celia Imry, who's a British actress. Um, so basically, this is about a, a group of friends who live in a small town in between Monte Carlo and Cannes, and they decide to open a restaurant. And it's their story of coming, uh, again, um, everything they come up against, like um, moody actors and actresses, mafia bosses after treasure hidden within the building they're putting the restaurant in. And, and so on and I gave this one four stars it was very very good I enjoyed it a nice easy read after that if I can find it because they are everywhere these books here it is I read This Disunited Kingdom by Leslie J Nichols and this tells the story of a post Brexit Britain um, Scotland is independent the Tories uh, are in power with UKIP scary I know and there is a major terrorist attack in London that kills hundreds of people and this uh, these two coppers investigators uh, basically have to investigate and find out what's going on I really did enjoy this this came out in 2016 around the time of the referendum and I gave it four stars and it's been sitting on my TBR ever since on to a bit of non-fiction and we've got this one. This is The Man Who Hunted Jack the Ripper, Edmund Reed and the Police Perspective by Nicholas Connell and Stuart P. Evans with an introduction by Whitting Richard Whittington Egan. Now they are all big names in the Ripper community. So this is literally does what it says on the tin. It tells the story from the police's perspective. Most usually the um, police officer Edmund Reed. It also tells you about what he got up to before and after the Ripper case and what he did when he retired. He, and he actually moved to the coast and sold ice creams and postcards out of a hut in his garden. But a very very enjoyable book but still only gave it three stars because there's a lot of repetitive uh, information in there. The next one I really really did enjoy if I can find it. Yes here it is and that is called The Cutting Season by Attica Locke. 
so I gave this one four stars and this one tells the story of a plantation in South America um, it's now a museum and wedding venue and it is run by the descendants of one of the slaves that was held captive there and a body is discovered on the plantation and there are police on site and Karen is uh, trying to help with the investigation and she's living with her daughter on site um, yeah it was really really good actually really really enjoyed it four stars for that one definitely worth a read next one is a fictional book about a real person and it's I Fatty by Jerry Stahl this tells the story of Fatty Roscoe Arbuckle um, right up to his death particularly most importantly covering the Virginia Rappe murder trial that he was um, forced to uh, be the defendant in there were three trials and he was uh, found not guilty on all three but his career was ruined and this is a fictional account of that story so I actually gave this one four stars a lot of four stars in in June there's some really I read some really good books um, and it says on the tin I love this book Johnny Depp so if Johnny Depp loves this book it's got to be good and it was next was Sophie Hannah where are you hiding Sophie there she is the narrow bed by Sophie Hannah so on this one there's a killer on the loose so he's killing individuals but they're also like pairs they're kind of like friends and each one is given a small white book with a few lines in it and this comedian named Kim gets given a small white book but she doesn't get killed um, the, the, she gets given the first book and then she's trying to find out what's going on along with the police it was a really good read I do like Sophie Hannah and I gave that one four stars another one I've had on my TBR shelf for a very 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 long time is the girl from the Savoy I think I won this actually from Goodreads when they actually did international giveaways now it's just America it's not fair um, by Hazel Gaynor I love this one I gave this five stars this is the story of a girl named Dolly Lane who is a maid at the Savoy Hotel hence the title the girl at Savoy but she wants to be a singer dancer actress she does meet the brother of a famous West End star but doesn't know he's the brother and he wants somebody to inspire his music she has some of his music because he dropped it and threw it away because he thought it was rubbish and she loved it she got it played professionally by the band at the Savoy for her um, and then she meets his sister and yeah his sister helps her become a star I really really love this book it's going to be part of the permanent collection I, I really enjoyed it I thought it was a great book then I read a really old one that my mum got and it doesn't even have a dust jacket on it it just has this little thing and it's called The Red Cliffs of Devon by Beth J. Coombe Harris now this is quite a, a religious got a lot of religious undertones to it so it basically uh, tells the story of a fam of two families it starts with a woman dying in childbirth and her child is taken by her sister to live with their with her and her husband but what they don't know what she's not told this child is that she is the daughter of a very wealthy landowner a lord um, and then we meet the other family who are smugglers on the cliffs of Devon and the son and this girl fall in love the stepfather doesn't like it and he has him press ganged into into the navy and they take him away but fortunately another one of the girl's relatives or somebody who knew her mother finds her and she's going up to work for this lord and takes her with him and she investigates what happens and finds out that he this child is the granddaughter of the lord her father actually died um before her mother and it's really really good story but there is a lot of religious undertones and, and a lot of talk about finding god so if you're not into that don't bother i'm not but i enjoyed the story behind it it was a very good story but because of that i only gave it three stars because i'm not into the religious stuff then I read, we're getting there, but we're really speeding through them. The Cozy Tea Shop in the Castle by Kathy, by Caroline, 
what was it robin roberts i knew you said robins then so ellie lands a job running the tea shop in a castle um without realizing how much hard work it's going to be um the lord is doesn't really like change and the estate manager is trying to implement changes to get more money in so they can restore the, the castle to its glory such as having weddings and such and he's not happy with that he doesn't want it and then of course ellie comes along and she makes beautiful cakes and stuff like that and wins them over and she wins over the lord as well as well as joe the estate manager who turns out to be the lord's son so there's a lot going on in this book but it was a good book but i still only gave it three stars because yeah too much sex i'm not into smart i don't need that then i read twice in a lifetime by helga jansen that is this book here so this is the story of amelia who is recently divorced um she has two twin boys um however before she was married and had her children she um was in new york one day and this man gave her a telephone number and said let's meet they didn't meet and of course now she's divorced she's wondering what happened to this fella that she should have gone out with is he the one that got away and so on and so on so a social media campaign ensues and they think they found him and she flies off to new york to meet him but is it him or is the love she needs closer to home it's always one of those but it was still a really nice book again three stars but it's predictable who the lo true love interest is but i find that a lot in those books so the next one is a book i didn't know i was going to get until the month and that's called the earth witch this is an old book it's by louise lawrence now paul read this in school and hated it because it's all all about the welsh folklore and goddesses and the earth and he didn't understand it because it's very metaphysical so basically owen falls under the spell of bronwyn the witch as the year progresses from winter to summer she gets younger as he falls more and more in love with her he moves up to live with her and then he realizes or he finds out that the price of this the price of the the a good harvest the price of a good spring a good summer a good winter not so harsh winter is his life and he doesn't want to give that up and his family doesn't want to give it up so they fight and in doing so they have a really harsh time and a harsh winter and bronwyn disappears but i really loved it i really really enjoyed it and gave it four stars so paul you don't know nothing but then he's not into fiction anyway so he proposes non-fiction and then anyone for seconds where is anyone for seconds i don't know is it even here i can't even find it right anyway i read a book called anyone for oh here it is by laurie graham tv chef lizzie partridge is now an ex-tv chef because she threw a chocolate cake over uh or chocolate mousse over the host of a tv show her partner has left her and her color cookery column has been axed so what happens next right so her nephew has a girlfriend who's a tv producer and this tv producer has a great idea to reunite her with the host of this tv program that she threw the chocolate mousse over and have them on a panel show so will she join this panel show will it be a success or will she find something else and that one had four stars because that was really good too next was people of abandoned character so this is going to be in the permanent collection because it's a fictional story about jack the ripper and it's by claire whitfield so what would happen if you married got married and then found out your husband was jack the ripper which is what happens in here hmm. basically that's it that's what it says what it is what it says on the tin i still give it four stars because it was very 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 well written and the um yeah it, it's more about her and how she, this this woman can escape from jack the ripper and she's married to him but you know for a fictional jack the ripper one it, it's, it's it's pretty good pretty good then we had the reading group now is that one here anywhere do we know ah uh, i don't know the reading group i can't find it it's probably here somewhere there's so many books anyway the reading group um was about a group of women who read 
that's all I need to say and every month the, the book is set into months and every month they have a different book and they talk about it and then it tells you a bit about their lives so all their problems one I think is married and her husband's having an affair and uh, then and, and so on but it, it got three stars it was an okay book it was a bit long there were parts of it I could have lived without Peter May Black Light of Blue this is a uh, book three in the Enzo McLeod series and in this case somebody is trying to frame Enzo because they don't want him solving all the murders in his friend's book and he, this is the third one he solves although he finds the killer of the person concerned he doesn't find the overall person that arranged it so this uh, this is gonna obviously not be completely tied together until book six it was still really good the characters are direct are really really um developing well Enzo thinks he's dying um, of cancer um, his daughter is nearly killed he's also mugged arrested um, yeah I, I'm really enjoying these and I gave this four stars back to the non-fiction now and we've got Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doughty so this is the story of Caitlin Doughty it takes us on a journey through her first days as a mortician working within the funeral industry at a crematorium and all the different things um, death rituals people's reactions to death um, the different types of cremations that they do I mean there is some stuff in here that you know you might want a trigger warning for obviously it deals with uh, the deaths of children and babies um, murder victims and so on but it's a really really good read I gave it five stars because Death is one of those things that's going to come to all of us no matter what, there's no point in fearing it. And what Caitlin Doughty tries to do with her books and her YouTube channel and her website, The Good Death, or The Order of The Good Death actually, is to take away the fear that people have of dying and to show them it is as natural as living and that you don't have to do what a funeral director says. So you don't have to have a funeral director come in and embalm, you don't have to have the body embalmed, you can take the body home and look after it, you can have whatever kind of burial you want, you don't have to have it, you know. And it's just to make you think about what comes next because it's going to happen to us all. Let's move on to Stephen King. Stephen King book of the month. I've got to check my phone if I can find it. Was The Dead Zone. Woo! Now this is one I've read before. So this tells the story of Johnny who, Johnny Smith, who is injured in a car accident and he's in a coma for five years and when he wakes up he can see the future and the past by, by touching somebody um, and some of this helps people so he helps catch a murderer and so on um, however he has a disturbing vision about a politician who is very very ambitious but could bring about world war three and stories can johnny do something before his brain injury kills him can, can he do something will he do something uh five stars for, for the dead zone i love it i love the tv series based on it even though it's pretty different but still it's still a good one carol matthews it's now or never was next and again i gave this one four stars god i'm getting really hot um so this is a story about three sisters twins annie and lauren and their older sister chelsea they go to chelsea's birthday party at the dorchester and they wonder why she's so rich and got this perfect husband and their lives are pretty crap um one of them's having an affair with a married man the other one isn't <laughs> and can they change their lives or is their sister as happy as it's all made out again this one was a four star read it was very very enjoyable then i read the death of mrs westway by ruth ware this was um from liddles actually uh, harriet westway receives an unexpected letter telling her she's inherited a substantial bequest from a Cornish grandmother but she believes her grandmother's dead however she doesn't know who her father is and it leaves her on on a, a tale of a, 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 a quest to find out her, her true parentage who her, her grandfather was her father was grandfather etc etc and all that and is she really entitled to this fortune gave it four stars i did read one children's book which was the box of delight by john's john maysfield now i enjoyed it but it was very bizarre and i think it's just that i'm too old and logical now that it, i just couldn't get into it um so I gave it two stars but the, the, obviously it's got Quentin Blake drawing so it's amazing but yes it does tell the story of a boy named what's his name 
Oh, it doesn't tell me on there. Okay. Um, he is given the box of delights to look after it, but the evil Abner Brownies gang are, af are trying to steal it. Um, can he keep it safe from them? What do you think? It was all right. I mean, I'll keep it for Jennifer. She might like that later. Another one I don't know what's happened to. Hardback. Terry Pratchett's Dodger. I read that. I don't know where it is. I've obviously put it somewhere and I can't find it and this is happening so I'm not even going to put the pictures up here. I'm just going to tell you. So Terry Pratchett's Dodger is basically the story of the art for Dodger. So a Dodger is what they call a tosher. It means he goes into the sewers and he basically goes through all the muck and grime. It's not all sewage but it is sewers and finds what he can out there so any jewellery money that's dropped and he makes a decent he makes a living out of it but what happens is one day he rescues a young girl um from being murdered and she's taken somewhere safe but these people are still looking for her so dodger is is trying to keep her safe everybody's after him he does these um amazing feats that he doesn't realize he's doing like he stops um sweeney todd from uh, his murderous rampage and so on uh, and gets him arrested um, but everybody wants to meet him from robert peel charles dickens disraeli and even queen victoria it's pure terry pratchett and i gave it four stars Ugh. No, I, I sort of read this this is called By Love Reclaimed, Jean Harlow Returns to Clean Husband's Name by Adrian Finkelstein, MD, and Valerie Franich, MED. Now, this guy that wrote this, he was the one who wrote um, the book about Sherry Lee Laird being the reincarnation of Marilyn Monroe. Now, except for in this one, um, Valerie Franich is Jean Harlow and he is Paul Byrne. Yes, he does resemble Paul Byrne, I will give him that. Um, but it's just basically conversations of people under hypnosis. There are some nice photos from the Darryl Rooney collection, which makes it nice because Darryl's collection is absolutely awesome. But again, I, I, I could only give it one star because it's like, oh, no, 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 no. A reread. Now this is a, goes, we go from four, to, we go from two, st one stars to five stars. Marilyn in Fashion by Christopher Nickens and George Zeno. Literally does what it says on the tin. It tells you all about costume designers, clothing designers, hat designers, shoe designers, makeup and hair, people that Marilyn Monroe used during her life and career. Absolutely beautifully and lavishly illustrated. Definitely worth picking up if you can get it. Definitely five stars, love that book. Then the Book of Mirrors. This is, I believe, translated. Three different perspectives on a murder from 1987. Um, a writer, a policeman and somebody else. And somebody who was there at the time um, and it's three different perspectives on the murder of this professor and can they figure out who killed him and why it was okay I gave it three stars it wasn't bad but it, it was did go on for a bit Carrie Grant oh he's down here hang on a minute I'm gonna have to change the battery in a second and I've left them over there Carrie Grant a celebration by Richard Schickel this is a picture book with a brief overview of Cary Grant's career. Uh, four stars, because the pictures are absolutely stunning. But nothing particularly exceptionally brilliant in it. It's just a nice photo book on Cary Grant. I'm gonna change the battery. I'm gonna have to go out and get Jen's. Right, back to it. I did read an arc, uh, well actually I read three arcs. The first one was called The Family Remains, which is by Lisa Jewell. This is a sequel to The Family Upstairs and continues the story of Henry, Libby, Lucy and Finn. Of as um, at this time the bones of um, somebody are found in um, the River Thames and this is one of the people that was involved in their abuse in the original book so the police are trying to track them down they're trying to track Finn down and then we've got another bit of a story with another person a separate story which ties up the ending of um, I want to say Libby but I can never remember which one it is excellent story I did think it needed a, a family tree because I couldn't remember the difference between Libby and Lucy and I was trying to think which one's which but I still gave it four stars and I love it I love everything Lisa Jewell writes so excellent Susan Hill the betrayal of trust Susan Hill's most known for the woman in white which is on at the fortune 
but this is a story about a girl who disappeared 16 years ago and uh, there's a storm and her bones are washed onto the dual carriageway and the grave of another woman who was killed around the same time is also discovered so Simon Sorelier heads up the murder investigation can he find out what happened to this girl even though it was so long ago and who killed her and why it is a very sad story it, it is extremely sad um i gave it four stars but oh yeah it was so sad very sad then i read we're getting near the end now the woman of the dead this is by bernard eichner and this is a translated book from i think from german uh, or something like that anyway the first stage of grief is revenge and this tells the story of a woman who whose husband is killed in a hit and run but it is not an accident it turns out he has been on the case of a trafficking ring who were abusing a few people they kept them um locked up in a basement and made them um you know prostitute themselves they took photographs of them being abused and tortured um and the husband is killed because he is on the track of the the five people who were involved in the death so bloom the main character decides that she's going to track down the five people that killed her husband and destroy them one by one and she does and it is bloody good again i think this is one i either won from goodreads or i got it in a, a book and a tea or something like that but oh my god this book was so good i loved it it was absolutely fantastic i gave it four stars two more hard, hard copies and then two of those i finally finished this huge tome of a book the memoirs of cleopatra by margaret george and literally it just does what it says on the tin so it's a fictional autobiography of uh, cleopatra the seventh uh, the last pharaoh of egypt and her marriage to both julius caesar and mark antony and the children she had with them and their rise and fall that's it absolutely fantastic four stars i love anything to do with ancient egypt this will be a part of the permanent collection and i read another one of tiktok book talk's favorites where the cruel dad sing by delia owens now i'll admit i really enjoyed this book and gave it four stars we all know the story it's the story of kaya the marsh girl um who lives on her own in the marsh because she's been orphaned she's abandoned by her mother her brothers left home her dad died eventually and she basically made her life there she makes a friend who helps her learn to read she becomes very very astute and writes books on the birds and the insects and the, the fish of the area um, but then she starts having an affair with a young man named Chase Andrews and he breaks it off with her and then in 1969 he is found dead but is he murdered did he fall did he jump was he pushed um, and it tells the story of what happened it jumps around the timelines but it's a really good book gave it four stars I'm glad I read it it was one of those I was going to avoid but I didn't last two I read a book called The Hiker by MJ Ford this is an arc I'm not sure when it's out I should have made a note but I didn't so Sarah's sister Gemma has disappeared hiking in the Pennines and her boyfriend turns up dead in a burnt out car so can Sarah find her sister before it's too late and solve a mystery from years previously when another girl disappeared on the Pennines it's a thriller with a good few twists and turns I gave it three stars because I felt it some of it was a bit really unbelievable but overall it's a very good read and I'm pretty sure when it comes out it's going to be a bit of a hit and then I read a book called Shadow Valley this is by a guy named Nick Zander Wolf um again this is an arc it's about um it starts off with a prologue and you've got two people one was a, a CIA agent and one was a, a gun runner I think or something like that and they have a son and they have to fight to keep him safe but then they find them the bad guys find them so they put in Operation Exodus which is to get him to safety however his adoptive parents die and he's placed into the care system where he grows up um, not exactly as a law-abiding citizen his adoptive parents are fantastic and he loves them to bits his, his adoptive mother is dying and he tries to look after best he can he meets a girl or well, he knows a girl named rory comes in the bar where he works but he doesn't know she's underage 
um, and she goes back with him, they sleep together, which in that time and that location is a felony. Um, wouldn't be in the UK because 16 is the age of consent there, but in that state it's not. And he and her decide to go on the run. Her father's a cop and he comes after him and because they are not being, you know, he's going to arrest her for, for all that and, and basically he's going to kill him. He then, his mum shoots a cop dead or she shoots one of them and then he shoots somebody, a, a cop, he kills a cop and they go on the run and then it tells a story about how they end up being protected by some drugs cartel down in Mexico and at th this point somewhere along these lines he runs into somebody who is his real father. So I, I gotta be honest all the way through the book I was thinking about well, but what happened to his dad? What happened to his mum? Um, so I was glad that they did resolve that at the end. If that had been not there, I was, I, if that had not been the resolution at the end with his mum and dad I would have been well what was the point of putting that prologue? You could have just started it from there. Nobody would have cared. So those were the 36, 36 books I read in June. I'm on 14 for July so it's not going to be as high next month and we could do a bit more but I thought you might be interested in um, seeing what I read and what I thought about them but that's it I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one very very soon bye everyone